combo actually began uh, at a bar in Walpole. Um, Norman Johnson, Eric Bicknix, and myself were up there having a drink uh, after a taping of another show at the station. And uh, we wanted to create a new program, a program that was was live, it had to be live. We decided that uh, the elements of comedy and, and also um, interaction by the, the community. Norwood and West, we wanted to take live calls on the air, chat with people. Really, it was a show for them, by them. Whatever they wanted to see, we pretty much said we catered to them. Um, and the, the title was well, pretty simply because we've had local stressing Norwood and Westwood in gumbo because I don't know if you know what gumbo means. It's a some Creole dish, but it's actually like a hodgepodge of, of everything. I mean, things you don't even want to know about. And uh, so we had local and gumbo, and, and there was your title. Uh, and the different roles we played, I hosted. I've hosted the program over the last uh, almost three years. Eric Bickernix, on the other hand, directed all the shows. Uh, Eric also contributed a lot of segments. You know, he was a, a definite, almost weekly or at least monthly contributor of comedy shows to the show. Eric is, is uh, intense. He's intense and he, uh, he's, he talks very fast when he tries to uh, explain what he wants you to do. I had an idea where you figure, you know, I figure anybody wants to be on TV, you know, I, I figure it was one of those deals where it's just, you know, we'll make a show, everyone, and anyone who just wants to be on television, come on down, and they just do it. Um, unfortunately, uh, nobody wanted to be on television. That was the problem because it's, you have to, you look pretty dumb. It's Eric. Eric. <laughs> <laughs> a zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> You can put that in, too. <laughs> but he's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of natural talent, and he's, he's got a real knack. He's got a real, I don't know what side of the brain it is, but he's got it together. Oh, okay, Eric always wanted to do a silly show, you know, Eric. Anyway, uh, what happened was uh, we started off by uh, John Horrigan was um, hosting election coverage in Norwood and Westwood, and uh, we had a whole bunch of these uh, books and albums to give away. We got from the marketing department hundreds of them get what it was called, but anyway, um, we decided that during election coverage, we'll wait for results to come in, that we would ask trivia questions. So it took off, you know, so many people seemed to call in and want to win these stupid books that we decided to make a show with the orientation of trivia in it. John Horgan, the original co-host of Local Number, that's right, he was here from day one. Uh, he didn't stay uh, much longer. Uh, he was here for uh, the first couple of shows, uh, and then he left. Uh, uh, smart man, uh, but a really bad dresser. <laughs> he just uh, he would come to the show dressed like in t-shirts. Uh, but he was uh, he, he was a funny guy. You know? He really helped get local gumbo off the ground. And now the town pond. A man-made pond built in 1700. Come with me on a walk to the town pond. Here we have an ancient barrel, similar to the depth charges they used to drop on McHale's Navy. This barrel has been here for a very long time. As you can see, it rolls back and forth, and we won't, don't want to disturb the garbage involved here, but this is a very ancient barrel with historical si significance. What significance, we don't know, but it is very old and it does rock. It was, I think, I think one of the most things that really touched me as far as our effect on the community was when uh, we received some pe pictures from uh, a group of kids who had what's called a gumbo party and they had, uh, we had sent them a pizza. Oh, we're, moving. we're back. Sure. Again, our merchant segment and a quick note. To Mike, Peter, and Eric who are watching, we're having their own little uh, local gumbo party, Eric, Pete, and Mike. In about a half hour, there's going to be a pizza delivered to you guys, okay? And that's courtesy of local gumbo, okay? We encourage local gumbo parties, <laughs> and we give you a pizza in return for that. So that'll be coming in just a little while. Okay, we're here with Ed Brown. Ed, are you a North or Westwood resident? Yes, I am. Okay, so you probably can see this uh, local gumbo, right? I hope so. Got a question for you. If you were allowed to get away with anything, anything at all, and not get caught by the police, what would it be? I don't know, probably find a million dollars in a lottery truck and take it. <laughs> Guys, what are you collecting for? Uh, well, well uh, us two are collecting us two? for... Is that English? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're collecting for jackets. Okay. Thank What are you doing here? We're collecting for uniforms for, um, Nord Ricks. And who are you and what are you doing here? 
I'm Eric Henry, and I'm helping him collect the uniforms for us. Oh, okay. So you guys having a good time? No, it's pretty boring. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes, no, yes. <laughs> But the things like that, things that, that apply it to a small town, and I think, I think John was right in, in, in making sure that stayed strictly in Norwood show that way. It, bringing it into a small town like that, I think, was very important. Hello, good evening. Now, what movie would you like to see tonight? Well, I'm only kidding. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm at the Norwood Cinema right here in Norwood. And what we're going to do this evening is we're going to give you a brief tour of Norwood Cinema. We're going to talk, talk about some of the history and to find some of the things that you might not see at nighttime, we'll show you today. And I'm going to show you some little cubby holes and some little things that I think are pretty exciting. And what we're going to do is our tour guide for this evening is Stephen Way. Now, he's the manager slash projectionist slash, well, he's a friend of mine. And Stephen will be with us for the, uh, the whole tour. Okay, so we're inside the, uh, the projection suite. Is that what I call it? <laughs> That's uh, glorified. <laughs> It'll make it sound good. Uh, but we're in here. Uh, now, right here, I want to see. So this is tonight's movie. Is this, the, this, the this is it. This is the actual film that will run through the actual projector. This is uh, Legal Eagles. Legal Eagles. Okay, now, is this kind of... Yeah, I can see. All right, I can see Red, mm -hmm. Deborah and Wing and Robert. I can see it. <laughs> Some of my favorite segments on Local Gumball are the ones that I've done myself because it's rewarding to see your work on TV, and it was good practice for me also. Uh, offhand, the first one that comes to mind is the Norwood High School music video that I did. I went up to the high school with the camcorder and shot all the students walking around. And there was one shot I liked the best is when they were walking up and down the stairway, and I had a strobe light effect where I froze every four frames out of six, and I thought, you know, I got a big kick out of that. My favorite part, of course, was uh, when Tim was talking balls, bats, and beers, though, as Al Moles. That had to be the best segment of the entire uh, series. I, I, I think the uh, rapport between uh, uh, Jeff and John really made the show go, and when Tim Dermody came on, it really clicked. Let me just say this. In all sincerity, I cannot sum up Tim Dermody in two sentences. He, he, was, uh, he was too complex. <laughs> His humor was Please. unlike anything we've ever known or may know again. Could be a blessing. I'm here with, uh, with a, a dear friend of mine, F. Ch <laughs> I'm here with a dear friend of mine, uh, F. Chad Fenswick III, Esquire, and Silenty. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so is the Yacht one. Chad, uh, thank, thank you very you much doing. for coming thank down to Local Gumbo. We appreciate you Marvel. taking the time. I tell you, John, I drove down here. Why are you from Vermont? We were up there having a little contract. That's the reason. Uh, the wardrobe, the hair's all along. We were up there discussing the latest trends in BMWs and, you know, and just, you know, where we would hang out this winter, you know, where to ski and uh, I'm sorry about the appearance. Yeah, I Chad, I, I, was, Chad I was noticing your hair. It a little shaggy, a yes, little John. Shaggy. Yes, a little shaggy, and God, am I embarrassed. <laughs> His name is Dr. Howard Thrift, and, and he's a meteorologist. Howard, yeah. welcome to the show. It's nice to be here, John. Okay. Now, would you, Thank I, you. I, I know you're a little nervous because you haven't seen <coughs> anything before. Yes. Would you do this for me? Um, would you I'm please sure. read? Trivia question, <clears throat> just one, then, then we'll go into the interview. Uh, sure. Would you read number three there, if you could? Num number three? Yeah, just number, number three. Number three. Sorry, you're doing it right Thank you. Thank you, John. It, it's really great to be here. Okay, uh, no, I'm enjoying this. That's right. You're doing uh, a good job. Question number three uh, is true or false. Was Led Zeppelin's? Yeah, that's is, is right. That Zeppelin's? Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Right, Led oh, Zeppelin. You've, got, you've, got a, you've got a typo that's there, That's the, the computer. Oh, like I, I understand. Yeah, look in the bowl. You got the kids here. They got all there ready to bowl. And all these people are doing is showing them cars. They can't bowl here no more. Look at those people. They look confused. Look at them. They don't know where the bowling alley is no more. They came here looking to bowl, bowling, and this is what happened. These poor people, little little kids. Little kids have come down here. They're so disappointed. They can't bowl here. Well, we're going to show you something else now. We're going to show you the driving. I'm sure they've been in the driving, too. They get down the drive. They probably went down here to the driving. They were got disappointed. They come up here. They figured they take the kids bowling. Now they're going to buy a car for the kids. They don't know what to do here. Another part of local gumbo that I also enjoyed uh, was the white face segments. And John was so frustrated. He never knew who it was. And he still doesn't know who it was to this day. And, you know, hopefully maybe we'll find out who he or she was, is 
or existed at all. But uh, I liked um, white, all the white face sequences where there was really chase scenes. I liked the one where, where white face talked. And <laughs> Hey, it's Whiteface! Like I mentioned earlier, consistency is very important in the game of tennis. Unfortunately, I'm consistently hitting the ball into the net today. But he's back! Oh shit! Is the answer right? It's correct. It's correct. Uh, oh my, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on one second. Oh, what? Oh, that's my thing. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 I can't believe that happened. Wait a minute. And I can tell you this much too. He was wearing an Arch Jim Williams button. Oh, 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 oh heck is that? And a Bridgewater Rainham button too. Wait a minute. Did you see that? What, what? Now, now, have you been following him? That's Whiteface. Oh, well, you can't identify him. Oh, what? Wait a minute. Could you? <laughs> but that happened so fast, I didn't even notice it. I came into local gumbo midstream, and uh, I remember this uh, the piece by uh, Joseph Gallant, that uh, it was a minute with Joseph Gallant, but somehow he stretched it out to a minute 30. But that's Joe. Um, Joe always has something to say. I'm Joseph Gallant. I'll be here on Local Gumbo to analyze issues of current interest, and I hope by doing so, we'll be able to shed a little light on the world we live in, and especially our corner of it. Jack Tolman was an artist, an uh, amazing man. Uh, the things he could do physically to make people laugh. I, I wept openly at some of Jack's stuff, uh, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. He, he was damn good. Another favorite, <laughs> Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I was just thinking of what I look like. Oh, where do they see this? Hurt can, you off the press. Fred, Fred I'm not, I, I don't want to hurt you, but can I just check underneath your head there? Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. You're such a jerk. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Jack's a good guy. I like Jack. He's him. Well, I tell you, I'm always going to remember Jack as uh, when he was in his glory, uh, when they had him made up as Freddy Krueger on one of our Halloween shows. <laughs> and that stuff hanging from his nose. <laughs> I'd like to see the show continue. Um, I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed working for and with the people I worked for and with. I'm sure a few people out there in the Norwood, Westwood community will hate to see it go, but um, them's the breaks. We just don't have time for it anymore. I got a lot out of it. I think a lot of the, of the cast really did. It was a learning experience. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. And it's sad to see that no one's carrying that on. Uh, there's still a lot that could have been done that wasn't, and probably done better. Just that it was a lot of fun being associated with the show, and I, I'm sure that the people enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed working with it. And uh, good luck to John and Eric and everybody involved with the show and all you guys. And I hope you continue to find somewhere else to put your energy. I think it's it's a it was a fun program to work with. I'm going to miss working with everybody. I, I, well. <clears throat> Actually, I need a job, and without gumbo, I'm just not going to be able to do anything anymore. Can, can we stop the tape? <laughs> it's really kind of sad that we have to give it up, but on the other hand, it's good that we're giving it up because it shows us that the great talent that we have is moving on to bigger and better things, and I just wish the best of luck to all of them. It was fun to have people come up to you and say, hey, I saw the show last night, or I saw it tonight, and you know, it was good. So it's, you know, it's kind of sad for the show to end, but to keep a quality show, we have to put some quality time into it, and a lot of us can't do it anymore. So the show, the whole show was volunteer. So it was kind of tough after working all day to go down there and you know, put in your time when you retire. But you know, we pulled it off, I think. I think we did a good job, and we'll be back. <laughs>